Good morning, Garrett here from Classical Rebellion on a Tuesday, and here's your quote. It's from Tchaikovsky. Inspiration is a guest that does not willingly visit the lazy. This idea is going to come up time and time again from any number of composers, artists, poets, and authors. Start the work. Just start the work and the inspiration will come. I guarantee it, it always does 100% of the time. If we start off with inspiration, what usually happens? We do our new activity nonstop. It's always on our mind. We can't sleep because we're bursting with new ideas. It's incredible. No one's ever thought to do this before. We're traveling over new and unexplored territory. We can't wait to climb the tree and partake of the fruit. And then four days later, it's gone forever. Inspiration, which comes before the work, is fool's gold. It's fleeting. It's temporary. Getting up every day and putting in some work, that will last. It's permanent and it sends a signal to true inspiration that you are willing to fulfill the promises that inspiration will provide. Inspiration is earned. It might not take that much to earn it sometimes, but it is always 100% earned. Inspiration, which shows up before we've started the work, should be called something else. The term, uh, bullshit comes to mind, but that's actually more permanent than false inspiration, and at least it serves a purpose of somewhat replenishing the earth. False inspiration is like BS, which immediately evaporates, leaving behind just the odor of another failure. I will continue to reiterate that just getting up and doing a little bit every day is almost impossible for a lot of us, depending on our personality types. If it were easy, we would all be masters of whatever it is we're trying to accomplish. How does someone like me get over the hump of laziness? How do I learn how to do just a little bit every day? From what I've experienced, what it takes is a persistent belief in this idea and a consistent desire to be able to do just a little bit every day. A thought as simple as, I want to be able to do just a little bit every day can eventually lead to that becoming a reality. Why this thought? Because it's neutral and it's also true. If at the end of a day, I go, wow, I didn't do just a little bit of fill in the blank today, but I want to be able to do just a little bit every day, well, then I can rest easy with that and I'm probably more likely to do a little bit the next day. If I need or should do a little bit every day, it raises the stakes to be sure, but it can start the cycle of failure if I don't do a little bit every day. For someone like me, I get better results when I am persistent but passive with myself. The music for today is the opening movement of Tchaikovsky's String Serenade. <laughs> He famously wrote this at the same time he was writing the 1812 Overture. He thought the Overture would be a temporary piece of music. He poured himself heart and soul into the String Serenade. He thought that between the two pieces, the String Serenade would be the lasting masterpiece. It is the greater piece, but the 1812 Overture is more popular. I personally wouldn't cross the street to hear another performance of the 1812 Overture, and I would probably drive one or two, maybe even three hours to hear a fantastic performance of the String Serenade. The piece of art is by Vasily Surkov. Surkov was commissioned to create the murals for the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. Tchaikovsky wrote the 1812 overture as a dedication for the opening of the same cathedral. It is the proximity to Tchaikovsky which led me to choose Surkov for this. Surkov tended to choose subjects that focused on the individual facing overwhelming odds. The subject in this painting is Fyodosia Moritsova. Feodosia became a symbol of resistance to the all-powerful state. She committed daily to her convictions in spite of being tortured and slowly starved over the course of four years. Her crime was heresy. Notice the holy fool in the bottom right corner of the painting. This is a topic, the topic of the Eurydice that we will be exploring as our journey progresses here. Feodosia Moritsova's story is kind of a downer to start our day off with. However, we can choose a spirit of gratitude that we live in a context where we do not have to spend our daily inspiration on surviving another day of torture based on our heresy. This is 
by far the greatest time to be alive, and stories like Feodosia Morozova's bring that fact home. So, do you want to do just a little bit today? If you do it, I promise inspiration will follow. See you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for staying all the way to the end. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. You can also visit our website, classicalrebellion.com. And remember, the number one thing you can do right this very moment to support classical music and the high arts is share your love of the art form with others.